Did Ukraine just surrender to Russia's invasion and occupation? Are America and Ukraine controlling Georgia? And is it true that Europeans don't believe in NATO anymore? This is Stop Fake, the place where we debunk Russian disinformation and set the record straight. So let's get to it. Russian media regularly churn out fakes about Russia's occupation of eastern Ukraine. Everything from calling their war against Ukraine a civil war, to producing dramatic but fake videos of battle scenes that they copy and paste from video games. These fakes have several purposes, one of which is to create the impression that Ukraine is violating the Minsk ceasefire agreement. This week, however, media outlets like RT and Moskovskaya Komsomolets took a different approach and were pushing stories that the Ukrainian armed forces were retreating and abandoning their positions on the contact line because of personnel and supply shortages. And unfortunately, a lot of Ukrainian media and politicians let their emotions take over and promoted the fake claim that Ukraine is retreating. Remember, Ukraine will be holding parliamentary elections on July 21st, and election mudslinging is the same in Ukraine as anywhere else. The truth is, the withdrawal of troops from the line of contact in the Luhansk region on June 26th is part of the implementation of the Minsk Agreement signed in 2016, and it's called disengagement, and it took place under the oversight of the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission, and its chief monitor Yatsar Halitchevik welcomed the move and reiterated the mission's full readiness to monitor the disengagement process. The deputy commander of Ukraine's Joint Forces, Bogdan Bodnar, noted that three sites were designated for disengagement. Two of the sites had already gone through the process, and the third site, which was the focus of Russian fakes, was in the town of Stanitsia Luhansk. Now, it's important to note that this process also forced the Russian command and their proxy forces to withdraw their occupation units from Ukrainian territory. So next time you read a headline from Russian media about Ukraine surrendering, think twice, because it's probably a lie. For about a week now, Georgians have been protesting Russian interference in the affairs of their country, and Russian media has unleashed a swarm of fakes claiming that Western geopolitical engineering has brought chaos to Georgia and launched a surge of Russophobic protests and anti-Russian hysteria. The protests, which began on June 21, were quickly followed by an avalanche of Russian fakes and distortions, accusing Georgia of provocations, the West of fomenting chaos, and even that Ukraine was somehow responsible for the protests. Kremlin-controlled media outlets use a class classic Russian propaganda narrative about the pernicious influence of the West, the EU and Ukraine on the internal politics of Georgia. And in a textbook example of manipulation, Russian publications like RT, Komsomolskaya Pravda and others ignored the real reason for the protests in Georgia. Now, Georgian popular anger was stirred up by the head of a Russian delegation to the Interparliamentary Orthodox Assembly. His name is Sergei Gavrilov, and he's a member of the Russian parliament from the Communist Party. What did he do? Well, he opened the assembly proceedings by sitting in the chair of the Georgian Speaker of Parliament. Georgian MPs responded by blocking the rostrum and not allowing the Russian delegation to return to the meeting. According to Georgian activists and members of the opposition, Gavrilov is a supporter of the Russian occupation of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. The protesters spoke out against such Russian delegations visiting Georgia in the future and demanded legislative reform and accountability from law enforcement agencies who used force against the demonstrators. On June 21, Georgian President Salome Zorobishvili called for calm and a peaceful solution to the unrest. She called the Russian Orthodox delegation a tool of manipulation, which Russia has been using in its political games for a very long time. And the protests in Georgia continued. Speaker of Parliament Irakli Khabahidze resigned. On June 24th, Georgian authorities agreed to amend the country's election legislation, allowing the upcoming 2020 parliamentary elections to be held according to a proportional system. Georgia's Interior Ministry, meanwhile, announced that as a result of an internal investigation, 10 law enforcement officers who had participated in the forceful dispersal of the protests have been suspended. A representative of the Russian state who sits in the chair that represents one of the seats of not just political power, but a symbol of Georgian independence is, well, it's just wrong, especially when your country has lived through years of Soviet occupation. Apparently, the United States has failed in its desperate attempt to convince the people of the European Union that Russia is a threat. 
Russian media like RT and Sputnik cited a report by the Atlantic Council, an American think tank, and claimed that the United States intends to create myths about Russian aggression in order to increase its influence on EU countries. Of course, they also claim that the Americans will fail because the EU has long been questioning the purpose of NATO because the European Union lost confidence in the alliance. So what did the Atlantic Council actually publish that RT used as a harvest for fake narratives and distortions? It's a white paper entitled The United States and Central Europe Tasks for a Second Century Together, which was prepared to mark 101 years of relations between the United States and the countries of Central Europe. The report considers possible threats to the security and stability of the United States and the countries of the European Union and examines how Russian aggression is perceived in the EU. The paper explains that after the end of the Cold War, the U.S. perceived Russia as a potential partner. Even the 2008 invasion of Georgia did not convince NATO to reconsider its relationship with Russia, thus enabling the Kremlin to unleash its aggression against Ukraine in 2014. After the 2014 Russian invasion of Ukraine, NATO did a reassessment and started increasing the strength and readiness of its deployable forces, sending them to the Baltic states and Poland as a form of deterrence against potential Russian aggression, the report explains. The report also provides data on which country is seen by EU members to be a threat, Russia or the United States. Former communist countries such as Bulgaria, Hungary and Slovakia on average do not see any threats from Russia. The authors of the report explain that this view is likely the result of a large-scale disinformation pushed by the Kremlin. What a surprise, right? But here's the quote. The Russian government currently employs a full spectrum of hybrid warfare tools to sow doubts about NATO and the United States, using energy dependence, economic ties, business opportunities, cyber attacks, strategic corruption, information campaigns, or direct support to Russia-friendly political actors and parties. At the same time, more than half the population of Poland, the Czech Republic and Romania are concerned about the aggression coming out of Russia. NATO support among Central European countries with strong economic, cultural or historical links to Russia is actually increasing and twice as many people support NATO membership as oppose it. Support for NATO in countries like Poland exceeds 90%. Even in skeptical countries such as Bulgaria and Slovakia, more than half of the population supports NATO. When you stop to look at the evidence on the ground, the hard numbers, Russian media fake narratives can evaporate quickly. Remember that next time the Kremlin tries to sell you on American myth-making in Europe. That's it for this week. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. You can find much more dissected disinformation on the Stop Fake website. And remember to hit the subscribe button to get notified about the Stop Fake Digest. I'm Marco Supran. Thanks for watching.